we are towards the end of the uh, World Creator Summit and uh, I'm here with uh, Robert Ashcroft, uh, the CEO of PRS for Music. So hi Robert and great to have you on. How's it going? It's pretty good. It's been very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's been an, a very interesting summit. So, so let's start by talking about the, the Global Repertoire Database. There's been a lot of talk about that uh, in the last uh, couple of days and uh, people seem to be pretty excited about it. Even if it is a European-driven uh, initiative, uh, uh, the, the US is really starting to take notice uh, of it. So uh, what, what are your feelings about the GRD and what do you think now is the right time to, to get this going? Well, it's, it started off being European really because it was the first territory in which we were doing uh, pan-territorial licensing and uh, in a split copyright world, you know, you suddenly find that that gets quite complicated. Already we're seeing global deals being done now, so uh, the it, it might have started in Europe, but it's really just a technical problem of being able to issue an accurate invoice uh, for the works that are related to the sound recordings that have been streamed or downloaded or, or whatever. And the, the numbers involved are so large that the only way of, of uh, calculating the, the correct amount of money to pay for the right owners is to automate the process. And you can't automate it unless you have an accurate database. Otherwise, you get unmatched uh, usages. And the individual sums of money, particularly on streaming services or re-downloads for cloud locker services, are so small that you can't afford then to put manual labor into uh, expert matching. So you need an accurate database. Yeah, and uh, looking at uh, uh, the the world of data, uh, you, you guys do an incredible job at uh, cleaning up the data that you have in your database and making sure that it's accurate and you can pay out uh, out your members. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, how these different databases could coexist together into, into one unit, do, do you think uh, it's uh, are you optimistic about the chances of being able to find uh, a, a compromise where everybody's happy with the, with the, the end result? Yes, I'm, and I think that we've done a lot of study in the design process and yeah. looking at all the, the, the process flows and uh, you know the uh, understanding who has the authoritative view of which version uh, is correct in which territory. There's been an awful lot of study of uh, that uh, in partnership with Deloitte uh, and the working group and, and all the various uh, people who contributed to it. And we're looking now to September to kick it all off. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, very exciting, absolutely. And uh, looking at uh, the way in which uh, the GRD also brings people together at the same table, one conversation that I had today that was interesting was the fact that uh, Aside from being an, an amazing project in itself, which is absolutely needed to be done, it's also a place where both technology companies and uh, 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 you know, rights holders and, and, and companies that work within the content industries are actually coming together at the, at the table in a sort of uh, solution-focused environment and so they can get past some of the maybe the differences that there are between them anyway and so make better friends in a way as well well that's a process you know people people uh, come into a, a forum like that with uh, you know, some of their prejudices and the the uh, uh, the the attitudes that uh, that they bring to the table from a historical perspective and then the process of working together you suddenly find actually that you're solving a problem uh, and not uh, sort of looking at each other across the table as if you you are the problem yeah and looking at uh, societies uh, and the uh, digital, um, I've been talking to quite a few um, here in the United States and also talked to SASM. And uh, I, I was just wondering uh, what is the weight of digital today in, in PRS for Music's revenues? Um, well, we've just declared our results and uh, we generated £51.8 million uh, from digital out of 648 total. So it's about 8%, which yeah. is, and that's purely from the uh, online music services. Yeah, and the growth, of course, on that has been astounding. And, and so uh, as we see a, a move from uh, an ownership-based model, or not a move, but really like a, a, a slight transition, but the, the two are keeping going in parallel from, a, from an ownership-based to, to a consumption-based, uh, uh, do you feel that that could actually be beneficial because artists can be rewarded time and time again uh, for uh, some of their works if they're being played over and over by the same person? Um, over time, yes. I still think that for that really to be viable for the artists, we need to see these services become mainstream. Yeah. And the biggest threat to their becoming mainstream is still the existence of all the illegal content. Sure. So uh, the, the, I think that the reason that the download model works despite piracy surrounding it is that in that one transaction, uh, you, you get a chunk of money that would take some time to accumulate with a streaming service. Um, you can only compensate for that by having a much larger market penetration of the streaming service. 
the numbers do work out in the end. My challenge is that it takes time for the money to accumulate in the streaming model. And, uh, you know, if I'm told that I've done my work today, I kind of expect to be paid today. I don't expect to be paid over the next 20 years. Yeah. And, and that is a bit of a challenge uh, with the whole model. Now, we're going to have to come to uh, terms with that somehow because that's the way it's going to work. But it is difficult, and, and our members really are uh, reeling, frankly, from uh, this, um, the, the, the timing of the way the money flows, let alone how much it is. And uh, of course, uh, piracy is still a problem. Uh, we moved beyond, you know, some of the, con the conversations that we were having in music conferences a few years ago. Uh, but it is still like a, a very important problem. And so, uh, both in the U.S. and in the U.K., uh, there are uh, provisions that allow uh, technology companies to to have uh, user-generated uh, content websites uh, and and put the burden on uh, notifying uh, these technology companies on the creators to actually uh, issue takedown notices and, and that's a very uh, you know, expensive and, 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 and convoluted process uh, that, that is not particularly uh, effective right now. So uh, do you think that there is a scope for some revision of, over those provisions, at least in, in the UK or Europe? Well, this is, this is a really complicated area. It's yeah. difficult to deal with uh, uh, in, in a short interview. Sure. Sure. But uh, we have signed a series of licenses with Google, including for user-generated content. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the perspective that I uh, am getting from Google is that uh, they see increasingly an opportunity to uh, earn money from uh, creative works. And so uh, we're finding uh, ourselves getting into a whole range of licensing discussions yeah. with them. So uh, I think that that's evolving. Great. And uh, looking at uh, British music as, as an export, of course, we're here in the United States and British music is uh, huge. So uh, how do you see uh, those revenues coming from overseas uh, in increasing over, over the past few years? Um, international revenue growth has been the source of our overall growth for uh, a number of years now. Uh, with the decline in recorded media uh, and the uh, slow increase in the, the domestic broadcast and online markets, that's more or less been flat in total and, and our growth has come from international. Well, now we're finding that there are some areas of the world where we're still seeing revenue growth. Yeah. We're finding that our artists are being uh, ever more successful overseas. Yeah. Um, but we're also finding there are some markets that are in real trouble. The recession in southern Europe is really biting. Uh, and we've seen some unfavorable results from the rate courts here in the United States. Uh, so there are some ups and some downs. Um, last year was uh, a challenge for us. We, uh, we didn't do quite as well as we were hoping and things are still looking a little tough. So there's two sort of elements. There's the balance between good and bad news, yeah. and that's been a little bit more on the bad news recently than on the good news. And against that, there's this underlying trend where we're doing it better, better exchange of data, better cooperation, uh, and that's got a slightly rising trend, and then the success of our artists. And that, in the last few years, has been absolutely unbelievable. If you think of Mumford & Sons, you think of Adele, you think it's just been, uh, think you know, the whole host of them. I mean, Emily Sandy this year. It's just been fantastic. And uh, finally, I wanted to ask you about uh, you know the evolution of uh, of uh, PRS for Music uh, uh, as a company to stay relevant, to stay modern, and and and, and uh, as as it has uh, uh, over the past few years. You know, w what do you think are the key areas uh, that that you're working on that you think are are the way of the future for you? Well, we've been uh, certainly since I've been there. We've streamlined our management team. We've reorganized the company. We are much more of a conventional um, matrix organization that I know from my previous corporate life. Uh, than we were when I joined it. It was much more individual business silos and they didn't necessarily talk to each other. So there was both uh, uh, waste of cost and, and lost opportunity. So we've streamlined and reorganized and we have uh, started to cut significant amounts of cost despite the investments in new systems, the GRD, etc. So on progress in all fronts, really. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time and have a great rest of the day. You're welcome.